Hey everyone, so uh, what I have is this giant box sitting in front of you is the uh, the Anycubic Chiron or Chiron. Or I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'm gonna go through um, the unboxing, assembly, and setup of this thing. So we'll just get right into it. <coughs> this is a very heavy box, by the way. So. Seems pretty well packed. <laughs> you actually do finally get to see the scale of this thing. Um, so just like their other, their other printers, they do pack some filament in there. That's full uh, one kilogram roll. So here we go. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm not snagging on anything. I think it's actually all wrapped together, so we're just going to cut this real quick. So this is the lower section, obviously, with the bed attached and everything. Uh, they did a pretty good job of securing everything, so it's not shifting around. So got a few pretty large zip ties on there. So keep the bed from rolling back and forth. And actually, when you're looking at this thing, this is really well built. I mean, you could see the number of rollers they've actually stuck on the side of the bed, so you don't get much wobble or anything like that. The steppers actually look like they're slightly more heavy duty than your standard steppers. Um, well, we'll get more into that once we get into the assembly. So that's the base section. We're gonna set this aside. And here is our gantry section. There you go. Looks like it's actually going to be pretty quick and easy assembly. Just a couple of cables to plug in, a couple of screws to put in there, and we should be off to the races. So, you know, there's a few little, few little things that we'll have to snap back together. So I don't know if you can see that, but that came apart at some point. Not a huge deal. It just snaps right back together. <clears throat> We're going to set this aside as well, and we have all our little accessories, and we'll go through that in just a second. So we're actually going to use the box as a table just to go through a little accessory pack here. Um, just like with their other printers, they do package some, uh, some filaments for you to try out. It all seems like it's... It's so all PLA. That's one thing you got here. Uh, the SD card and USB adapter is in this little bag right here. Power cord. We've got rollers, screws, plates. And I'm sure that's to uh, meet the two halves of the printer together. That guy right there, without actually looking at the instructions, not too sure what it is, but I think that has something to do with bed leveling or more than likely bed leveling, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, five spare nozzles included. A couple of gloves in there. A little tool kit, uh, wire cutters, a couple of little wrenches, Allen wrenches, Ball and wrenches too, actually, so those are a lot easier to use. And tweezers are included. A spare hot end with heater and thermistor. And uh, a little bit of tubing as well. And here we have... Open this up for you. 
or spatula for recording pepper and prints, uh, USB cable, and what I'm gonna guess is also the uh, the filament holder right there. And we've got our quality control has passed, so we've tested this thing. Oh, forgot to mention this. They do include some nozzle cleaning uh, little needles in there. And finally, so that's everything that's included there. Um, like I said, the two sections look like they're going to go together pretty easily. And so uh, I'll do a quick little video of the assembly of the printer itself, just so you can see how it goes together. And following that, we'll actually just do a test print right out of the box. We'll level the bandage, do a quick test print, and just see how it performs without any tweaks or anything special. Alright, so I'm just going to run through the assembly on this thing really quick. Excuse all the noise. Um, so first thing, you want to get rid of all these zip ties because those are definitely going to be in the way if you don't. And they might just be harder than moving them around. So, so the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, actually get the frame mounted to the base section. What you're going to want to do is this little bag with, so it has these little T brackets and a bunch of these little screws in it. So on each side of the frame, there is going to be two screws. Um, there are holes right here. It's, I don't know if you can see, there's two holes on either side of the base section and those will screw into the upper section. So you'll want to do that before you install um, these brackets just so that everything can line up properly. And so each one just gets one lock washer and uh, just screws in from underneath. So what I'm gonna do just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna try to see if I can get this thing to line up. So that's easier to, to see what I'm doing here. I could actually tighten it all the way down like this too because this, this thing is a bit heavy and it's not going to be too easy to move around. Alright, now that we have those screws tightened, um, we're going to install these T-brackets. And just remember, when you're tightening any of those screws down there, you are going into aluminum, so you don't need to be super tight. On these, you can crank down a little bit more because it is steel. So they're gonna actually attach to, um, to these little nuts over here. So there'll be one on each side, and uh, they're gonna sit right in there. That's gonna be one of the other Allen wrenches. You just gotta find out which one. And that size is included as well. So all you gotta do really with these, seems kind of counterintuitive, but if you just wiggle it in, they will just pop right into place because those nuts are meant to, uh, well, this guy didn't work out so well. These nuts are designed in a way where they should slip into that track and kind of turn themselves so that they, uh, they, align and, and lock in place. You just want to make sure that they're loose enough so that they can indeed turn in that track over there. All right, so now we've got the little uh, T-brackets in there. Those are just our stiffeners. Uh, what we want to do at this point is plug everything in. So there's more than just a few cables. Uh, you have obviously these two cables that go in down here. And I think these are keyed, so you can't really make a mistake on those. So those will pop in right there. And we have 
see if we can get you a shot of this. A couple more cables back here. So there's this one for the stepper, which we'll plug in right in there. And then we have the second little wire. If you come around and look at this, that goes into our um, our limit switch there. So that will just plug right in. And that's that. And same thing on the other side. We got again, um, limit switch plugs in. It's kind of hard to see, but that's the actual limit switch. And where it plugs in is right there. So it'll plug in from this side and then stepper motor as well. So now all that, all that is plugged in. Um, really the only things left to do is move the, um, the screen from its shipping location and snip off a couple more zip ties and we should be ready to go ahead and start printing. So to relocate the uh, screen right here, you're just going to grab your Allen wrench, take these two screws out of it. So once you pull the screen off, uh, these are some more of these little T-nuts over here that slide into the, uh, the frame. So you're just going to bring this and slide it in up here. If I'm not mistaken, it sits way back there. Um, and just tighten down these two screws. So that's all you need to do. Screen's mounted. It's good to go. I'm going to tuck this wire in just so that it's out of the way, but it won't be contacting anything. Um, so the last little bit is just your uh, filament holder which again, we'll take a couple of those, a uh, couple of the little T-nuts over there. You'll mount it wherever you see fit, somewhere along this rail. And I believe actually, we're probably gonna go somewhere back here just so that it's in line with the extruder. Uh, first thing you wanna do is just assemble these two sections. So clearly it's gonna sit up here like this and uh, you'll have this piece sitting there to actually hold the spool. And looks like we're gonna go, yeah, probably back here somewhere. So let me just give you a wider shot. So it'll probably be somewhere along the back over here so that our spool actually lines up with the extruder as much as possible. So once you have this all assembled, two screws in there, two T-nuts and two screws in there. Same thing, just slide into the rail and uh, tighten down your screws. And all the uh, fasteners for the spool holder are actually included in uh, one little bag, so you don't have to go searching for them. And they do include a few spares, so don't worry if you have spare screws laying around. Get that nice and tight. And once you do that, uh, that is actually the end of the assembly process. So other than that, we'll fire this thing up and uh, see what it does.